Welcome back to another episode on Photoshop Tutorials in Webtrix Home. Today, we'll be learning 25 color grading and color correction techniques in Photoshop. These are the techniques you need to master before working out on photo manipulation. That essentially means we'll be talking about all the image adjustment options available in Photoshop in one single video. If you know a couple of them but want to learn the others, please go through the timeline available in the description. So, we'll start right away, but before that, please hit the like button, that's what keeps us motivated to come up with more videos in the future, and subscribe us so that you'll never have to miss our videos. Then, without wasting time, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using photos from unsplash.com, you can find the link for the images in the description below. You can visit unsplash.com and get tons of free stock photos. So, getting back to the topic, you can go to the image, adjustments, and you'll see a number of adjustment options. Click on any one, and you can play with the values and get things done. But there's one backdrop, and that is this method is destructive. Either you need to duplicate the background layer, or you'll destroy it. Instead, you can go to the layer, new fill layer, or new adjustment layer, and the adjustment appears on a new layer on top of your background layer, and that will help you work non-destructively on your images. You can simply turn off your adjustment layer and get your original image back, alright? You can see the icons for the adjustment layers on your layers panel as well. If you don't see them, you can go to Windows, Adjustments, and load the Adjustments panel. Alternatively, you can go to the bottom of your Layers panel and click on the half black, half white circle icon and all the layer adjustment options along with the fill options will appear. You can click on any one you want to apply and go on to modify your emails. Let's start from the top. We have got three fill layer options and the first one is Solid Color. Once you click on the Solid Color Adjustment layer, you get a dialog box from where you can pick up a solid color and apply on the layer. Pick any color you like and hit OK and you can see the entire canvas is painted with the same color. If you want to apply the effect to the entire image, you can even delete the layer mask and still the solid color is on its own layer. Now what you can do with the solid color fill is play with the blend modes and blend that color to the original image. Click on the blend modes and check each of them and select the one you are happy with. And with the latest versions of Photoshop, you can get the preview while you move your mouse over the blending modes. Cool, right? I'll go with the hue here. And one more thing, if you think the intensity is too much, you can always play with the fill or opacity to reduce the intensity. Isn't it amazing? You can double click on the adjustment layer thumbnail and change the values if you want to. Here's the before and here's the after. Next, we have the gradient fill. Select it and a dialog box will pop up asking you to select a gradient. Since we have already learned about the gradient, I'm not talking much about modifying the gradient here. Let's select an orange one to rectify the skin tone. And just like the solid color fill, play with the blend modes and select the one you are happy with. So, here's the before and here's the after. Next, we have the pattern on the list, select it and a dialog box appears asking you to select a pattern you want to add and yes, we learned it in detail in our previous videos, so let's select one, scale it up so that it doesn't look repetitive, play with the blend modes and select the one you want to go with. And like earlier, play with the opacity and make it subtle. Let's turn on the fill layer and it looks much better. So here's the before and here's the after. Next we have the brightness and contrast, select it and a panel appears from where you can modify the brightness and contrast. Since this is a dark image, I'll go with one of the previous adjustment layer on. Let's turn on the solid color fill and then play with the values. 
You can also ask Photoshop to automatically detect the best possible adjustment here or do it manually. And you can see here's the before and here's the after. Next we have the labels, select it and a panel appears that allows you to play with the red, green and blue color intensity individually or all of them together. You can find a couple of presets on the top that can be useful in some images. You can adjust the highlights, mid-tones and shadows of each color channel from here. If you go with RGB, it's all about how bright or dark you want your highlights, mid-tones and shadows to be. And if you go with the red channel, it's all about how red or cyan you want your highlights, mid-tones and shadows. If you go with green channel, you can choose between green and magenta. And if you go with the blue channel, it's either blue or yellow. You can also restrict the amount of color shades using the output labels. Higher the labels, more color shades will be available. Lower the labels, less shades will be available. You can also go with the auto option and ask Photoshop to find the best settings for you. You can also customize the settings for the auto option from the panel options and play with the algorithms you might find best suited for your image. You can go with monochromatic contrast, part channel contrast, dark and light or brightness and contrast. You can also define the targeted highlight, mid-tone and shadow colors from here. By the way, you can do that with these color pickers too. You have three color pickers here to target the highlight, mid-tone and shadow. Select any one and click on the target color. Let's say I want to define the mid-tone color here and you can see how the colors change. Select the highlight picker and click on the brightest area and you can see the difference. You have got the reset button too over here along with the option to view previous state and clip the layer to the layer below if you need it. Let's go with manual adjustments here. I'd like to brighten up the mid-tones a bit. Then the red shadows be more tilted to cyan. The mid-tones in green a bit to the green than magenta. And a bit change to the blue mid-tones. Let's turn on the fill color for a better view. And you can see the result. Here's the before and here's the after. Next you have the curves. It's quite similar to the labels. You've got a couple of presets you might want to go through and see if that satisfies your requirement. You can also opt for auto option and manipulate the auto option settings as we did in labels. You can adjust the brightness with the curve here in RCV channel. In other channels, you can pull the curve up or down to define either you want it to be more tilted to red or cyan, green or magenta, and blue or yellow. You can add any number of points to the curve and adjust the image as you like, or click and drag the point out of the histogram to get rid of it. You can adjust the highlights and shadows labels from the sliders below. You can also use the pencil tool from here and draw the curve yourself. You have also got the highlights, mid-tones and shadow speaker from where you can pick the target color and ask Photoshop to apply that to the image. You have also got the hand tool here that you can use to directly go to the area where you want to make the adjustment and then click and drag it up or down to modify the intensity. And you can also pull the initial points vertically up or down to adjust the brightness. And 
and you can see here's the before and here's the after. Next, you have the exposure that allows you to control the brightness of the highlights, midtones, and shadows individually. You get a couple of presets if you want to explore. Exposure controls the highlights, offset controls the shadows, and the gamma correction controls the midtones. You also get the highlights, midtones, and shadows color picker at the bottom if you want to automate the process. So, here's the before, and here's the after. Next, you have got the vibrance that allows you to adjust the vibrance and saturation in your image. We can say vibrance is subtle saturation, while the saturation itself is a bit extreme. Find out the right mix you want for your image, and you are done. Since this image is highly saturated, I'll decrease the vibrance and try to find out the best combination. And here's the result. This is the before. And this is the after. Next, we have the hue saturation adjustment that we have already learned in our color replacement tool. You can manipulate the hue, saturation, and lightness here and transform your image into something different without actually affecting the original layer. I'll reduce the amount of red from this image. And everything looks all right. Here's the before, and here's the after. Next, we have the color balance that allows you to adjust the color of the highlights, midtones, and shadows individually. Either you want any of them to be more red or cyan, green or magenta, or blue or yellow. I'll try to reduce the red tint as much as possible from here. Since we don't have much colors in this image, let's turn on the solid color fill layer and adjust the color balance. So, here's the before, and here's the after. Next, we have the black and white. This basically desaturates the colors and turns the image into grayscale. But you have a lot more options here to manipulate how you want the colors to appear. You can explore the presets and go with one. Or manually, you can turn any of the colors present in the image to any shade in the grayscale except for the blacks and whites. Moreover, you can also get an option to add a color tint on your image like what we did with the solid color fill. And you get the auto option too here. Needless to say, here's the before. And here's the after. Next we have on the list is the photo filter. You've got a couple of filters to go with and select an option that suits the best for your image. You can also select the color manually and see how it works. You can define the intensity of the effect from here. And you can also choose either you want to preserve the luminosity from the original colors or let them be replaced with that of the new color chosen. 
Let's turn on the fill layer for this one too. And you can see the subtle impact it adds. So here's the before. And here's the after. Next up, we have the channel mixture. With this option, you can adjust the strength of one color over the others in each color channel. You have got a couple of monochromatic presets you might want to explore or do it manually. Since this image is a lot red, I'll reduce the reds. Let's reduce the green too. One more thing you need to notice here is the total percentage of the three channel values. More closer you are to the 100%, more better will be the output. The image has got a lot of blue tint, so let's reduce it too. And you can see how the image is transformed. Here's the before. And here's the after. Next we have the color lookup. You can select one of the available presets or load one from external sources. You have also got the option to invert this color sequence in some of the presets here. You can also opt to go with abstract color profiles listed here or loaded from external sources. Or you can go for some device link profiles and you can see the difference. This is the before and this is the after. Next up you have the invert that will invert the colors in your image. You don't have any settings to play with. This can be used to create some artwork or even trace the outlines in some complex images. We'll see that in some other tutorials in the future. Let's go with the next option for now. Next up we have Posturize. This converts an image into a less detailed poster-like result by merging the pixels and generating an average color value. You can define the total value for each color channel using the label slider and restrict the amount of colors in the mix. Its label here contains one color each from the red, green and blue channel. Let's turn on a couple of adjustment layers to add more color information to the image and you can see it much better. Next up we have the threshold. This converts the entire image into 2-bit color mode that's plain black and white. You can play with the threshold label to hide or reveal image details. The output can be used for other artworks or you can play with the blend modes and take your creativity to next level. Next up we have the gradient map that allows you to apply different colors on the highlights and shadows in one go. The darker color will be applied to the shadows and the brighter color will be applied on the highlights. Select any gradient you like and play with the blend modes or opacity to produce a different set of result. Let's send the lighter one to the skin tone. You can also invert the gradient and see what it produces. So this is the before and this is the after. Last on the list is the selective color. This allows you to select a color from the image and then adjust the intensity of red, green and blue channels for that color within the image. You can make it more like cyan, magenta or yellow or add more reds, greens and blues. Since this color is red, I'll work on the red color and try to rectify it. You can select any color from your image and adjust them. And here's the result. This is the before and this is the after. So the layer adjustments are over, but if you go to the image adjustments, you'll still find some more options. Since these methods are destructive, we'll work on another image instead. The shadow highlights option allows you to adjust the intensity of shadows and highlights in the image. If you click on the show more options, you'll get to adjust the midtones, play with them, and you can see a subtle difference in the image.
So here's the before and here's the after. Next up is the SDR toning. The worst thing about it is that it doesn't allow us to have multiple layers. You get a couple of presets here you might like to explore. Or if you want to do it manually, you get a couple of toning methods here. Exposure and Gamma allows you to define the luminance of the entire image or the midtone separately. You can also go with Highlight Compression and reduce the intensity of the highlights. You can also let the application set the best result for you with Equalize Histogram. If you go with Local Adaptation, you can add glue to the edges around the subjects. You can also adjust the difference between the highlights and shadows, adjust the overall exposure, and enhance the details. You can also adjust the luminosity of the highlights and shadows, and adjust the vibrance and saturation too. You also get the curve to adjust the brightness and contrast here. Fine tune the settings and you can get a good result. This is the before and this is the after. Then you have got the desaturate option and that will turn the image into grayscale. You don't get any options to manipulate it though. Then you have the option match color. And that will allow you to match the color tones of one image to another image. You can adjust the brightness and saturation here. And you can also fade the impact. So. Here's the before and here's the after. Next up we have the replace color option that will allow you to select a color range and then replace the hue, saturation and luminosity that we learned in our color replacement tutorial, right? Here's the before and here's the after. The last option on the list is equalize and that will allow you to distribute the lightness evenly on the entire image or a selected area. If you go with a selection, you get to choose either you want to equalize the selection area only or equalize the entire image based on the selection. And you can see the output. Here's the before and the after. Well, by now, you should have understood what each of these options do. You should also understand that a single technique won't fit on all images. You should master each of them and use the one or a combination whichever feels right depending upon the image. That's all for today. I hope this video really helps you to learn Photoshop to a greater extent. Hit like if you found this video useful, that's what keeps us motivated to come up with more videos in the future. If you think you have got some ideas that can help me produce more better videos, share it through the comments. Let me know what you feel about the video and how many of these techniques did you know earlier through the comments as well. Thanks for watching and please subscribe us for more videos. Thank you.